Mel's Meshach Yaya Owusu, um, and I am a non binary slash trans masculine person. Trans masculinity means a lot to me, I guess. It's something, well, masculinity itself is just something that I've struggled with for a long time, and accepting myself like in my masculinity has been both like one of the most amazing things but equally one of the hardest things that I'll probably ever do and that's for a lot of reasons I guess trans identity for me anyway is like traversing all ideas of gender all ideas of femininity of masculinity and finding myself amongst all of this white noise I guess and so me finding myself was me trying to identify how I feel comfortable in my own body. Whether all these things will ever be resolved is, <laughs> is another thing, but is the journey of transitioning. Transition means different things to different people. Um, and what it means to me, it means that I'm trying to move towards myself. Um, I'm trying to find a home in myself, for myself. There's always a narrative of like, I woke up one time when I was five and I knew I was trans, like, and that just does, that's not a narrative that um, necessarily works for me. And I appreciate that, that it does work for other people though, and I very much respect that. But identifying outside of the gender binary has been something that's, like, been very difficult for me. And I initially thought, like, if I was to identify as non-binary, that means that I'm not allowed to transition because that's not what it means to be non-binary. And so that even set me back ages before coming out as non-binary and that was really difficult and like knowing that I identified in like very big ways with like a male presenting body with masculinity but still wanting to hold dear to the parts of myself that do like embody the femininity and holding on to parts I guess even of like womanhood and growing up as like a dark-skinned black woman I was very much a I was very much a part of my own experience and so I know a lot of um, trans people don't necessarily like feel that they experience life as the gender that they were assigned at birth in in varying ways but I feel like for me in order to understand my experience and in order to like I guess move forward with my life and like understand the ways that people treated me, the ways that I was in danger, like the ways that people wouldn't respect me on the basis of my identity. That took me understanding what it means to be a black woman and trying to embody that as much as I could in order to, to survive in this world, I guess. And so black womanhood is something that's so important to me and like black feminist, black feminism and black feminist thought is like the first place that I feel like I found a home I felt understood and especially queer black feminism and I know that may not make a lot of sense to some people but I just feel like I embody so many like different different things in it and that's just okay it's wonderful I have a lot of fears about the transition that I'm undergoing I guess and the ways that especially I guess the ways that the world will see me and it took me a long time to accept it and to, to find like comfort in it because the ways that masculinity had harmed me were very like present in my in my life and in my world to feel that I could impart that same kind of fear that I sometimes have like being around like men in other people was something that like I very much began to hate myself for a lot of us trans people go through like a long period of depression like especially like before we come out and like depression in general like trans men have like some of the highest attempted suicide rates of everyone and a lot of my depression at that time um, kind of came from like my fear of becoming like the archetypal man or like becoming like the men that had hurt me or like the men that I feared and the fear that my presence by itself like could invoke any of like these feelings that I've had against men in other people was like enough for me to be like raw like either I do this and like go towards myself or I just can't be here anymore and when going towards myself meant that I might 
do that to other people like it just made me hate myself so 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 much but i found that when i started trying to confront those the things that happened to me and tried to start healing like i guess the feminine parts of myself or the parts that had been harmed by masculinity was the only route for me to be able to like accept myself in my fullness and to be able to like confront myself and love myself and honor every part of me um, in, and hold myself, I guess. You know, sometimes it's really easy to forget what you're looking forward to on this journey because you get such in a place with the world where you're always awaiting some sort of hatred to come your way some sort of hurdle that you have to leap over in terms of healthcare or in terms of like any institution and i went to like a an assessment for like therapy with um like a queer clinic and like the lady asked me like oh what are you excited about i was like the fuck <laughs> don't want to ask you that question in a minute <laughs> and so it really made me start thinking like yo why am i like living life like this life on the offensive like or the defensive the def i don't know i don't know i don't know but why am i living this life like in a way that doesn't center my joy and doesn't center like myself i guess and centers like other people's feelings about my identity and other people's feelings about like the way that i um live in this world and so it really made me reflect and start thinking like yo like there's so much joy like that can be associated in this journey and I need to ensure that I give myself the space to experience that joy and to love myself and to like care for myself in in the ways that I deserve. You know there's there's actually a lot of very jarring things to do <laughs> about being like trans masculine and a lot of those things come down to the hygiene of cisgender men. Um, <laughs> some of y'all are nasty. Like honestly, men's toilets, like <sighs> men's toilets, they're fucking disgusting. <laughs> they're actually grim. And like sometimes you go in there and be like, okay, like I can do this today. Let's go. And you get there, there's no fucking door. There's just a toilet, or the toilet is full. I'm not even gonna go into it too deeply, but. <laughs> As like a trans masculine person or a trans man, like it's it's a very very daunting experience. You don't know what is gonna happen. You don't know if there's even gonna be a toilet. Is it all just gonna be like that's 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 a very long thing about being trans masculine. But you know, we move. And I guess um, fears that I have like for myself presenting as like a dark-skinned black man are also very heightened and like being very aware of the ways that people treat me dependent on how they um, perceive me and like the fears of the state essentially and it's like it's a devil I did know and a devil that I'm beginning to that I knew in ways but not in personal ways in it and the ways that the state treats dark-skinned black women is fucked the way the state treats dark skinned black men is different and equally fucked. And so just trying to learn how to how I need to navigate like these situations, whether it like be police, whether it whoever the fuck it is, like it's it's a very stressful like thing and like being criminalized, being hypersexualized, being all of these things, like it just don't stop. And in that sense as well, like Two things that I am often like very worried about is like both being like stopped and searched by the police and being like searched at airports because I do identify as non-binary um, slash trans masculine slash etc. What I said earlier, um, <laughs> but the way that I'd feel comfortable with my body is if I present in like a masculine way and often I guess be read as a man. And what that entails for me, I guess, is that when those situations do occur and the fact that they're heightened because of how I'll be presenting means that I'm gonna have to be searched by 
like cisgender men and that form of like non-consensual touching by cisgender men onto my body is something that like I worry about a lot and something that I don't really know if I'll ever be able to resolve and like all of those fears of like being in a body that is trying to I guess heal from like forms of male violence that then is gonna be like violated in those ways by virtue of like the restrictions that we all place on um, our ideas of gender. My hair is something that's really important to me and it's something that is what well, I find very connected to my gender. I wanted to cut my hair for years and years and years. And my mom would tell me, you're not gonna get a job, you're gonna be looking like this. She'd go, she used to chat like, <laughs> shout out my mom though, because I love her. <laughs> but it meant that I didn't cut my hair for a long time. And then when I got my PhD funding, it gave me like the, like the space to be like, rah, like I ain't gonna have to worry about a job for a minute now. So the same day I got the PhD funding, I went to the barbers, cut off half my hair. I was fucking happy. I guess that's kind of when this journey began. There were ways that I was just questioning my gender and like re recognizing that I'd never truly felt comfortable in my own skin and in my own body. And starting to do small things that changed that was, it was so liberating. And so when I came out, came out, I guess, I cut off like pretty much all of my hair. And I recently started locking my hair. And so every single part of like this hair has been on this journey with me and that probably sounds bare moist but <laughs> is what it is isn't it and i got the locks done in the same week that i started hormone replacement therapy so i've been on t for four days now i think <laughs> so yeah it, these locks are gonna be like i guess a documentation of that Starting tea was a madness. It was a busy as fuck day, like trying to make sure that it happens and all of that kind of stuff. But it was exciting and I'm so happy to be on it. And I'm interested to see and understand like what my relationship is gonna be on it going forward. And the doctor was giving me options. Like some non-binary people like choose to have a low dose for a long time. Some non-binary people choose to have a full dose and then um, stop it at a later date. Some choose to be on it for like ever. And so I'm still think figuring out exactly what my relationship with it is gonna be in the long term. But I feel so happy and so like, just so relieved and so blessed to be able to like have come this far in the journey because like two years ago I'd have never thought I'd be here today like when I cry myself to sleep when I fucking like think about mad shit like so it's just a blessing to be here and now that I'm on tea or testosterone um, my next, the next stage for me is to get top surgery and that's something that like will completely transform my life like so much and at the moment I'm trying to fundraise for it um, and yeah I'm just hoping that people are able to like support me in this journey. I don't know if I ever knew what it really meant to love myself until embarking on this journey and honestly it's been and it's continuing to be like the greatest act of self-love that I could imagine for myself. We thank God! <laughs> I don't know why I did that then. <laughs>